Hi, FlossTube. Welcome to my channel. I'm Nicole Buckeye Stitcher. For those of you that have been here before, welcome back. If you're new, thanks for watching. It is the end of September, so it is time for an update. Um, first, no ums. I have something to read you about the ums, which I don't necessarily agree with, but I'm going to try to do no ums past that one. It's the end of September. Tomorrow's October. It's going to be in the 90s this week. I have given in and put up my fall decorations. That wreath behind me, I don't know if you can tell from there, it's Ohio State Buckeye colors. It's got football ribbons in it. My sister made that for me. I have a big giant fall colored wreath on the front door, which I actually like a lot. It just feels like it's the wrong season. Um, and I've got mums on the front porch. So I've given in, it's fall, but I'm still wearing shorts and sandals. I have not brought myself to light any fall candles. I have tons of fall candles. They just don't feel like it's the right time of year to be burning. I still want to be burning summer candles. Uh, hmm. Let me find this. I took a screenshot of this because I looked up after my last video why we all say um so much. And I came across this and I don't really have a source for this to know how scientific it is. I don't know, I can't even remember, um, oh, research from the Journal of Language and Social Psychology, but I don't have any idea how many people they studied or over what time, so take it for what it's worth. But Cohen further points out that we use um most often at the beginning of an answer and when we're transitioning to a new idea. Research from the Journal of Language and Social Psychology argues that people who use filler speech such as um are more conscientious and thoughtful. I don't agree with that because I feel like when I'm umming, it's because I don't know what to say next, not necessarily because I'm trying to be thoughtful in what I say. I'm just looking for any words at that point. So anyway, um, what have I, been, have I been working on? I have been working very little this month on wishes for my sister's Christmas present. And I'll show you why in a minute, why I haven't gotten much done. But I did stay with the DMC 816 and I love it. Um, it's really nice and dark and rich the way I was hoping it would be. It just didn't look that way to start with. The gold is the called for one strand of 680, and then I added one strand of Petite Treasure Braid, but I can't remember which one right now. So I need to get back to that, but it does go along pretty quickly. I'm using this in my lap stand so I can stitch two-handed, and once I kind of refresh my memory of the groove of it, it goes pretty quickly. So I'm looking forward to getting back to that. The reason I didn't work as much on the wishes pattern as I wanted to is because I was working on a pattern by my new favorite international designer. Her name is Evdokia Nikoleva. Her, I guess it's her, well, it's definitely her Instagram name. I don't know if it's the name of her company, but it's, I don't know how you say it. Let me find it. Punonchka. I'll put that right here. Punonchka is how you find her on Instagram and on Etsy. Her patterns are on patterns are on Etsy. Um, and I bought some of her patterns back in June and forgot to show you guys because they don't have cover pages. Or maybe I didn't print the cover pages when I downloaded the PDFs. But I will insert pictures of them as we go along. But she did a freebie on her Instagram for a cat that you stitched on Black Ada and then you make it into a cat-shaped pillow. And this is a freebie so I can show you. This is what it looks like. And I was working on a few of those for some friends. She also has a similar pattern in the October issue of Just Cross Stitch. So in this issue, she has this kitty. <clears throat> Look how cute it is. So I don't have the kitties that I stitched to show you because they are already at um, the finisher at Keepsakes. She um, had a deadline that she wanted me to keep to and I was bound and determined to keep do it so that she could finish them for me. Um, so I can um, disperse these kitties. I'm not keeping all these kitties. I know I tend to keep kitties, but I'm not keeping these four kitties. So um, this one I'm gonna do eventually um, and to put with one of the freebies. Um, so that was something I had to get done, and that's what took away from the Christmas pattern. So I worked on four of those. Um, mm, being thoughtful. What else did I per? Oh, let me show you. So I'll start inserting pictures of the other patterns of hers that I bought. So back in June, I bought two patterns from her. Um, the first one is called Winter Birds, and I'll insert a picture right here. 
I'm sure you can see why I had to have that one. Um, but the others in that series uh, pattern are cute too, um, to have them made into ind little individual birds and then kind of stick them into a bowl. The second one I bought uh, is called Light Up Someone's Life. And here's the picture here. And yes, it's also stitched on black fabric, which I have found I love stitching on black Ada. The Ada that was called for in those kitties is 14 count, and I loved it. So I think I'm going to do the same thing. I don't know if I'm going to do 14 count because I'm not sure how big it is. And then I just recently bought, she's got uh, pattern two series for pattern of the month. One incorporates the name of an animal into each month, and the other one is a house. And so I just bought October. and November. So I think October's really cute with those little kitty faces and the spiders coming down. Um, and then I got November because if you remember last year I did the uh, Joyful World Sal series and there were a few months I didn't care for and November was one of them. So uh, eventually I'd like to stitch November to have as my little monthly series uh, for that one. And then I also bought from I think it's Cute Patterns by Maria is the name of the Etsy shop. I'll put it below. She had a new one that came out that I am madly in love with. It's called Hello September. How beautiful is that? I don't, it is technically a full coverage where the house is. It's not super huge though. And the pattern's super easy to read. There's a fair amount of colors in it though. Um, but I would like to consider maybe making that a start next year. So that's Cute Patterns by Maria. I'll put her information here and below. Uh, and then I bought some actual patterns. I got these from Julie McConnell at Reflections Framing and Stitching in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I had a gift certificate there from Lana till the st last stitch gifted me. And I purchased Spell of the Moon. This is a reprint by Blackbird Designs. I don't know how many Julie got in stock, but um, if you're looking for this one, I know at one time she did have them. So this is Spell of the Moon by Blackbird Designs. I love that little owl. I love how cute this little pattern is. And then I got the new Crossed Ring Collection Biscornest. I don't really want to take this out of the packaging. Maybe I can get it. No glare. It's a ruby throated hummingbird biscornest. nest. Uh, I'll take it out because you're not going to be able to appreciate the fabulousness. I believe this is the third one in the series. I have not stitched a one. Look how cute that one is. I like the greens in that one. So I purchased those two from Julie. I think that's all my finishes. No, I think that's all my purchases. Um, okay, let's go to FFOs. Earlier this year, I was able to get on Vanna's wait list for her Twisted Stitcher finishing services, and I sent her two things that I had made for my mom. They're going to be for Christmas gifts, um, and I got those back this week. The first one is an Easter Bird by Heart and Hand. And she did this in a little flat fold because my mom went crazy when she saw her flat folds that I have um, for other things, for those Joyful World sows. So she gets that at Christmas. There's a little button. And then this is by the same designer that did the Joyful World sow, Snowflower Diaries. This was a little um, bunny pattern. And I asked Vanna to make it into a flat fold that's the shape of an egg to kind of look like those fancy chocolate eggs that... Um, we had when we were kids and my mom had when she was a kid. Um, so, of course, everything matches. And I finally got pom-poms. So the very first time I ever sent anything to Vana, I sent some of my own finishing fabric. And I sent white pom-poms for, I don't remember, it was an ornament that I wanted her to use for it. And she sent me pictures and said, I'll use the pom-poms if you want, but what do you think about this instead? And, of course, it was better. So she sent the pom-poms back. And I've been dying to have Vanna do something with pom-pom because I think they're so cute. So um, this was something that she picked out. I did end up using those white pom-poms. They're going to be on that Sue Hillis and to all a good night. The pillow is going to be trimmed with those pom-poms, but it's not back yet from the keepsakes finisher. So those are my two fully finished. 
So I put on Instagram, it feels like summer, it's officially autumn, and I stitched Easter, spring. So that's that. Um, okay, so if you remember me telling you a few videos ago about a friend of mine who's crafty and one of her friends passed away and left her all of her crafty stuff, and my friend gave me all of the DMC, and there, I mean, I think there's every single color, um, bobbinated, very neatly written on. So, um, and, and I think I talked about it when I was talking about the Blackbird design because I stitched with the new and the old and they weren't the same dye lot, but whatever. Anyway, recently I went to my friend's house and because I was looking for buttons for all those little black cats. And so my friend is gonna be 80 in February and her craft room is amazing. Um, she had her son take the closet doors off and put shelves in the closet of one of the bedrooms. And so she has shelves full of organized boxes with labels. That's everything that's in them. One of the boxes that she has is just a mishmash of stuff and it says really good tools on the box. But her little button area has one of those little plastic containers that has little drawers in it. And she had it organized white two-hole, white four-hole, gray two-hole, gray four-hole. So we dug through drawers and drawers of buttons, and of course, we didn't find anything that was perfect until I got to like seven colors in. We got to cream or off-white. I don't know. Anyway, I found the perfect thing. But anyways, so she was showing me all these, you know, all these different projects she's working on. She's got a Cricut. She makes Christmas cards. She quilts. She sews. She used to cross stitch and she does it every once in a while, but she doesn't see as well for cross stitch as she used to. She asked me if I wanted this project bag that she had made and she said she probably made it in the 70s and I said, of course I wanted it. And she said, well, you don't have to use it and if you decide I don't want to just throw it away because I'm never going to use it. Um, it does have some stains on it. I did wash it a couple times with OxyClean, and most of the stains came out, but not all of them, but that's okay. So she said she stitched this in the 70s, and then she made it into this little bag that opens up, and you can put all your things in there. So um, this little thing, I imagine, would hold your needle, and then you can just tuck it in there. This one, unfortunately, the the attachment was lost before she gave it to me. Um, but you could put your project or your pattern in there. You can put all your flosses. How stinking cute is that? Um, so I'm not really a save the stitches kind of gal, but I felt like this was an appropriate save the stitch since someone I knew had stitched it and was getting rid of it and she knew I would take good care of it. Um, oh, I, I don't remember what she said these are for. There's these this little row of these little metal, I don't know if your floss hangs off of there. I'll have to ask her again what that's for. Oh, it's a snap. Hmm. I'll have to ask her again what that's for. Um, so I thought this was really, really cool. I washed it and then I hung it up on that hook <laughs> to dry. And I'm sure that Brian thought that I had some kind of weirdo decorating going on because it was there for two days before I was like, yes, it's dry. I can take it down. Nothing's going to bleed. So I'm sure he thought that was part of the decor. It's not part of the decor. Um, what are my plans for October? So I want to get a lot more of that Christmas done. I don't know when I'm going to see my sister at Christmas this year because it's the year she goes to her in-laws in New Hampshire. And then our brother's getting married the last weekend of December, which is just a couple days after Christmas. So... She said something about us getting together at Thanksgiving for Christmas. I don't usually go up to my parents for Thanksgiving because it's just a day. If that's the case, there's no way I'm going to have that wishes done by Thanksgiving. So she may just get a picture of it. In the meantime, she has sent me another pattern that she likes that she wants me to do. She's just going to have to get mine. Um, so my plans are to get a lot more work done on that. And then I've got to pick out some things because I'm going to the Midwest Cross Stitching Retreat in the middle of October in Amana, Iowa. So I have a couple fall things that I think I want to take with me, but I haven't made my decision yet. That probably would have been a good thing to put on here to make this video a little bit more beefy. Um, but I think I'm going to take three things. 
and I might stitch myself those cats because the one that I stitched with the pumpkins goes super fast and I've already stitched four so I almost have the pattern memorized. The uh, one that's in the magazine is a little bit more detailed so um, I don't know if I'll be able to work on that one um, on black fabric without my um, the light and magnifier that I typically use. So I may take those as well. But I think I'm going to take three projects with me to Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat. And then at the end of October, um, beginning of November, I'm going to San Francisco for a veterinary conference. I need hours to renew my license next March. Um, um, so I may be able to get together with some stitchers if any West Coast stitchers are available. I don't really know any West Coast stitchers except Abby Topknot. I met her at both stitch cons. Um, but for some reason, I never end up watching the West Coasters. Um, mm, so thoughtful. <laughs> uh, so it would be nice if I could meet up with some of the stitchers there, but I don't know how much time I'm going to have by the time I get there and the conference is only two days and then I fly out like Sunday. So I get there. I'm only there three days. So those are my plans. Not a whole lot. Life updates. The baby cats turned one year old on Sunday the 22nd. And they're monsters and they're rotten. Oh, I'll insert some pictures here of all of the things. I'll give you a montage of all of the things the babies have chewed on this summer. So first is a makeup brush. These are not in the order of things they chewed up. I can't even remember the order. Well, we all know about the sock. Still haven't found the sock. Um, okay, so up first is a makeup brush that I found the, in the middle of the staircase uh, one morning when I was coming downstairs to make tea to go to work. Um, completely chewed up. I don't remember leaving it out of the drawer. It's a brush I really liked, but say lovey. The second is a sweater that I bought at TJ Maxx, which here in the U.S. is a discount store. I don't really know how to describe it. They get like overstocks and second and third season things. We're going to have a kitty visit because it's nap time's over. Anyway, so I was went there for a few things specifically, tried on some clothes. On my way to the register, I saw this sweater. I didn't feel like trying it on. It was at TJ Maxx. Everything's inexpensive so I just bought it and thought if I don't like it I'll take it back and I tried it on and it was super itchy and I didn't like the way it fit so I put it back in the bag and left the bag downstairs for a few days it was going to be three or four days before I could go back to that side of town the night before I was going to go I came downstairs to put things in the car so that everything would be ready and I wouldn't forget and I picked up the bag and it was empty and nearby I found this sweater with holes chewed in it. So that couldn't go back. They also chewed up this. Any guesses as to what that is? Hmm. That's a tea light or it was a tea light. I don't know where they found it. I don't know if it had candle wax in it or if it was empty. I don't know if they ate the wax but I did find later that day I did find the little metal disc that holds the wick. They're bad. They're bad kitties. They're really cute kitties, but they're bad kitties. So babies turned a year old. What else? I went to an OSU game at the beginning of September. They won. Browns won on Sunday. That's a shocker. They won soundly. What else? Um, the lovely Ellen from Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour invited, kindly invited me and a friend to her concert when Crash Test Dummies was here in town. So Spooner Rooney Stitcher, if you follow her on Instagram, she's local. We went to the concert and had a great time. We got to meet Ellen um, and take some goofy pictures. I'll insert one here. What else? Oh, I started taking an Italian language class. Uh, I took Italian when I was in college, so 20 plus years ago. I took it for a whole year. I had class multiple times a week. Here it comes. And I don't want to say it was easy. Hi. I don't want to say that Italian language was easy. I do want to move this kitty. This is Wyatt. He is a sweet little baby boy. I don't believe he's a chewer. Are you a chewer? 
No, I think it's your brother's. Um, anyway, so I don't want to say that Italian was easy for me 20 years ago, but I just feel like it was easier. Holy cow, it's hard to learn things when you're in your 40s. Um, but it's all adults, and we're all ridiculously embarrassed of what we're saying, and we have a wonderful teacher who's very patient. He's from Italy, but he's been here for a long time. So uh, I took the second one of the five-part series because they told me since I'd already taken Italian, they thought I would be bored in level one. Whew, I should have taken level one. But it's once a week, which is also part of the problem, and I don't care for the format of the book. Um, it's... I just don't care for the format of the book. So I'm having a hard time, um, but I'm not frustrated. I'm kind of feeling glad for a challenge. Um, I have just needed to try some new things besides working in cross-stitch and reading, although I am reading more. So those are all my life updates, right? Yes. I feel like there was something else I was going to say. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you about three floss tubers I've been watching. One I already mentioned. It's Ellen Reed of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. She's got three videos out, so go check her out. The other is Ann Thompson. She's the owner's, uh, owner of Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas. I went there last fall when I got together with some other stitchers. Um, that is Marlene Stitching by the Lakes shop and Fat Cat Flossing is her shop too. Um, so go check Ann out. She is super, super sweet. She is all about encouraging you to stitch what you want to stitch the way you want to stitch it. And the third one is Carolyn Zook. Her channel name is C Zook Stitch. I don't know what the heck I've been doing. She's been making videos for about a year. She comments on my videos and I don't know how I suddenly realized that she makes videos. So I've been catching up with her. Um, she's got lots of fun projects. She's addicted to project bags too. So go check her out. I'll list them below. That's um, the I, uh, in addition to the ones I typically watch, those are some new ones I've been watching this summer. So I hope to be back in a month with lots more than what I had today. Who knows? Once I may go back and edit this and put the pictures in, it may be a lot shorter than I thought it was. Where are we at now? 22 minutes. Hmm, it's not bad. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to talk to you soon. Leave a comment below to say hello. I said that last time and lots of people said hello that have not commented on my video before. So say hello and tell me what you're planning on doing this weekend. Have a great day. Bye.